going to come over here to something called the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is responsible for taking takes short-term memories and stores them. long-term memory. Put our lesion up here, our classic lesion is someone called HM. He died last year. And so his identification is known now, but I don't remember what the H and the M stands for. So got to keep going with HM. And HM suffered damage and he could not learn new information. So he met his doctors anew every day. He couldn't remember them. He could remember old information. So he could remember his name, where he was born, things like that. The other thing is he could learn new skills. The classic one was trying to draw a shape while looking in a mirror so everything's backwards to you. And that can be a difficult thing to do. But HM got really good at it. So basically what would happen is he'd be presented with this task to do this and he'd be very good at it, but he wouldn't know why he was so good at it because he hadn't remembered doing this in the past. This one's going to get me into a little bit of trouble, but I just love the neuroscience of it too much to let it go. But this area is called the cingulate gyrus. What it does is it helps us go with the flow, flexibly process information. And there's a political angle to this, and that's why I say I'm going to get into trouble. But at this point, just think about there are different people around you that might be very comfortable being put in brand new situations. And there are other people that are not comfortable in those situations and they want things very well defined. Happens in the classroom too. There's people that are like, yeah, just teach me something. And there are some students that are telling me exactly what I need to know for the test. People that are able to go with the flow have high activity. So I'm gonna draw the lesion over here. So I, I shouldn't put lesion, so I'm gonna cross that out right away. It's just a functional finding. The people that can go with the flow have high activity in singular gyrus. People that like things well defined, they don't like leaving things to chance. These people have low activity in the singular gyrus. Low activity, high activity, low activity is not really a judgment. It's just if you have certain behaviors, those areas of the brain responsible for those behaviors would be expected to have higher activity. It's been found in studies and obviously they haven't done a lot of studies on this because it hasn't because it takes an MRI and those are difficult studies. But these people tend to vote liberal and these people tend to vote conservative. Now you can use either term that you want, flip-flopper, could be a derogatory, a pejorative term, but just use a, a nice term that a liberal doesn't usually seem to be that uncomfortable with a little mystery. And conservative voters tend to want things well defined. And so somebody with high activity in the cingulate gyrus tends to vote liberal because they're comfortable going with the flow. People with low activity in the cingulate gyrus tend to want things well defined and they tend to be conservative voters just a finding that's been found. I'm going to come over here to the posterior view and I'm going to do this area completely together. It's called the corpora quadrigemina. But there's separate parts in here and the separate parts are, let's do these on top. These are called 
the superior colliculi. And these are responsible for reflexive vision. You're going to step off the curb and you see something big off to the side that's moving towards you and that instinctively says get back on the curb that's your superior colliculus. Now you can imagine that it'd be nice to have a similar area that does the same thing now but uses sound and so that's this area and this is called the inferior colliculi. So now rather than seeing something out of the corner of your eye you hear this big truck and that makes you jump back on the curve. So this is reflexive hearing. And there's kind of, if I can go back, there's kind of a unique lesion associated with superior colliculi, and that is something called blind sight. And that is, if you've got damage to the cortex, then you can't see. But these people can still respond reflexively to sight. Or maybe a better way to say this is if you shine a flashlight at the wall, they can find where that beam is, sh is shining on the wall. And it's because the superior colliculus has very rudimentary vision. So these people will still have visual reflexes. Reflexively respond to vision. So they'd still be able to jump back on the curb. I think that's it for the posterior. Thank you.